Hi, I'm Beth from Midwest. I'd like to show you the steps to making great wine at home from your frozen pails of grapes. When you receive your pail of grapes, the first thing you want to do is thaw them. It takes about two days in a warm environment in your, inside your house. You'll want to take the lid off and um, actually stir them up as soon as you're able to with a sanitized spoon. This will break up any cold center core and distribute the temperatures better. After they're completely thawed, I sanitize my hands and arms and dig through the pail of grapes looking for any stems or foreign objects. These grapes are usually very nice and clean, though I found a stem here. And that's it, you've got a beautiful bucket of grapes ready to be fermented. If you bought your grapes from any place other than Midwest, you may not have received all the information that you need and therefore we'll have to run a few more tests. In order to do this you'll want to pull a sample of juice with a gravy baster into a test jar. The first thing you want to do is uh, check for your bricks or specific gravity by using your hydrometer. You want to keep your bricks between 22 and 25. If it's lower than that you'll probably want to add some sugar add about a pound at a time and stir it in and retest it. That will get your specific gravity high enough so that you'll have a nice balanced alcohol in your wine. The next thing you want to do is run both pH and acidity tests. Uh, do both of the tests first and then you'll know if the acidity is low and the pH is high, which is fairly common, the easiest thing to do is add some tartaric acid in small additions until you get it right. Um, and tartaric acid will raise the acidity level and, and it will lower the pH. If your acidity is looking fine, and that should be between about a 7, 0.7 and 0.9, if that looks good but your pH is high, now pH should try, try and go for about 3.6. That's the best number on that. If it's too high, you'll want to add either some potassium bicarbonate or potassium carbonate. And um, that should adjust your juice. Remember, if you buy your grapes from Midwest, we have this all thought out for you. We have the information and all the adjustments all figured out. We're ready to add the yeast. Your options are pretty simple. The first thing I like to do is add some yeast nutrient, which I think of as a vitamin for the yeast. Just sprinkle about one teaspoon per gallon into the must. Next, you'll take your chosen packet of yeast. At Midwest, we supply you with the one we think is most appropriate. You can either follow the directions on the back of the package, or you can sprinkle it on top and gently stir it into the must. My preferred method is to dissolve it in a few ounces of water, let it sit and dissolve for 15 minutes, and then stir it down into the juice to get a nice, a nice ferment going right away. At this stage, your grapes have been fermenting on the yeast and the, the CO2 is pushing the skins up and leaves a, about a six inch thick cap of, of dense skins over the top. It's important at this point to punch down or press down the skins. I'm going to show you with a sturdy spoon how, how dense they are. Um, what I really like to do, I'll poke a hole in it so you can watch the, the juice begin to ferment up through it. I like to use this punch down tool. This is um, basically a glorified potato masher but you put quite a bit of pressure on it and it it just breaks up the skins, it pulls out colors, flavors, tannins, and makes for a better tasting wine. It's important to do this at least twice a day so you don't get a bacteria growing over the top of the skins or even a mold. 
And that's all there is to it, but you do want to keep at it the whole two weeks your grapes are fermenting on the skins. It's been two weeks and it's now time to press your grape skins off your juice. If you have a press, this is a great time to use it. However, if you don't have a press, I'm going to show you how you can press your skins off your juice easily at home. I use basic kitchen equipment. I have sanitized everything except my hands, which I'm going to do next. I start by taking a couple of large straining bags. And I just set it inside a colander in a bowl. Now all I'm trying to do is capture the grapes for starters. So I'll take the skins and just scoop a lot of them into the bag. I usually do this in several additions because otherwise it's too much to work with. Now that I've filled my straining bag with enough skins, I'm going to tie a knot in it and um, press the juice out. I do want to add that you can see there's, there's a juice line from about here down in the bucket, so there's not that many skins. Usually it takes me just two, two of this size bag. I just start squeezing and massaging the skins through the colander and it really pushes the juice out well. What I like to do then is collect, I'll show you how much juice I have here already. Um, I'll collect that through the funnel. This is how I collect my juice off the skins. You'll get about three gallons of juice off a bucket of grapes. With some creative use of a few kitchen tools like strainers, colanders, funnels, and straining bags, and about a half an hour of your time, you'll end up with a three gallon carboy of beautiful red wine. At this point, we have a three gallon carboy filled with beautiful wine. I like to do a malolactic fermentation next. What the malolactic does is it softens the malic acid into a lactic acid and makes it a much more palatable wine. You can either buy it freeze dried or in a liquid form and just put it, sprinkle it in the carboy and stir it up good. I add my oak chips or my oak product at this time, just put that in the carboy as well. It sits for about six weeks, six to eight weeks, and it's nice if you can stir it twice a week to resuspend the bacteria. We at Midwest are happy to supply you with everything you need to make these wonderful wines from home. We have the frozen grapes, we have all the additives and detailed instructions to make your own. Uh, you may want to consider two buckets of grapes to fill your six gallon carboys. As a long-term winemaker, I'm so excited to have access to all these wonderful grapes from places like Sonoma and Napa Valley. And they will be the most superb wines you've probably ever made. Cheers.